we're mostly positive on this channel, right? But for just today, just for today, we're going to be a little negative because there are some words and phrases that you need to know when you speak in situations where you're uneasy and uncomfortable. And I'm going to teach you those 15 words today, which use a very common frustrating vocabulary and angry expressions that can really show off your feelings, not show off, show your feelings in a way that people don't really like, or even you don't like when you're expressing yourself that way. So let's learn those 15 words today and you will be able to be angry properly in English. So one, number one is irate. Irate means angry, okay? Angry and irate are the same things. There's no difference. Um, if you, but, but actually I'll just say this. In an informal situation, I'm gonna say angry. I'm not gonna say irate, okay? Because uh, irate is more formal. So if it is a situation at work, shouldn't be irate at work, but if it's a work situation or somewhere where you are giving an interview or you are conducting one, there's misbehavior, there's you criticizing the government, going online talking about something you are really angry about. You can also say you are pretty irate about that thing. Okay, let's talk about word number two, antagonize. If you antagonize someone, you make that thing worse, okay? Let's talk about antag antagonizing a person. If I'm a bully and I constantly bully this one person, I am antagonizing that person, particularly. If I antagonize their religion, their culture, their uh, likes or dislikes, or their choice of TV shows, I'm saying, hey, you watch all of this, you're probably a wimp. So I'm antagonizing their personal choices. So you can attack basically a person or their personal choices and you can say that you're antagonizing those things. Um, you can also antagonize relationships. Like if you're a home wrecker and you come in between a couple, you're antagonizing their relationship or you are saying bad things, you're backbiting about people. So you're antagonizing their reputation. So basically anything you attack or hurt or damage, you antagonize that thing. It is a verb. The next one is salty. I use this a lot actually when someone is getting irritated. I call them salty. This is informal, so don't use it with anybody formal. And if it's a situation where you you have a person who's talking to you and they're very uh, loud or angry, and you just want to be you just want to be this cool person, right? We so sometimes we don't want to replicate anger. Anger, sorry. The best way to fight anger is by being cool, and that is always something that people appreciate. People always appreciate others who talk slowly and calmly even when the other person is shouting. So that person who's shouting is never appreciated. So, well, this person is shouting at me, I can ask him or her, hey, why are you being so salty? First of all, it is you showing that you're in control. It also sounds cool and it is informal. So you can use it when you kind of want to insult the person and tell that person, relax, calm down. Let's have a normal conversation. Word number four is pissed off. This is something you must have heard, I'm sure. It is informal, uh, don't use it formally, never use it at work, never use it in front of your boss. It is the same thing like angry or irate, but it's like this, irate is formal, angry is very neutral, very general, and pissed off is right here. It is informal, not really used with anyone else except for friends or family or people close to you. The next word is exacerbate. When you exacerbate something, you make something worse, okay? A uh, good word to know if you're writing or speaking. So we say worsen, right? Hey, don't uh, try to fix my Christmas lights. <laughs> you're probably gonna worsen them. You can also say you're probably gonna exacerbate the Christmas lights. You're gonna exacerbate the way they look, okay? So you're gonna make them worse. And uh, it's a good word to know. You know, we say this uh, worse thing a lot and I've seen people say, more worse or more worser, which are both wrong. More worse is okay, but worsening is what we technically use. But since we use it a lot, exacerbate is a perfect replacement and a fancy word and vocabulary for you to know. Uh, word number six is sulky. Sulky is pretty much similar to salty, so kind of you can think of it in that way. But sulky is not just angry, okay? Sulky is more of being uncooperative or having a bad temper. So you think of people, for example, you're the manager or the employer, and uh, someone is working under you, and you might not uh, be in that position. So think of your uh, brothers or sisters who are younger than you, your nieces or nephews who are younger than you, and you just want these people to work with you and cooperate with you, and they're being sulky. That means 
uncooperative, uncoop uncoachable. Uh, if you are, an, you are an employer, you are a manager, you know exactly what this means when you have employees who just don't want to listen to you. So those people are sulky. We don't say it to their face, but in your head, you're like, this guy is so sulky. And that means uncooperative or bad tempered in many cases. Word number seven is resentful. Uh, once again, a very common word. I hope you know this. If you don't, resentful means someone who is very hateful, very hateful of someone. So it's usually um, in cases of jealousy. If I have an older brother, which I don't have, but if I have one and he is very successful and every person in the family always um, tells everybody that this guy is the better brother and more successful and, and always the comparison, I'm gonna be resentful maybe of that brother. It means I'm gonna be jealous and jealous and resentful are the same things pretty much. Resentful is more like you have more hate. You you don't just are jealous, you're not just jealous of that person, you hate the person to a great extent and that is not healthy at all, but people can be resentful of others, uh, mainly from jealousy. Word number eight is abhor. So if resentful is like angry, angry, abhor is angry multiplied by a thousand. So abhor is extreme hate for something, usually used as a verb. Uh, I abhor the diplomatic system of uh, whatever country. I abhor um, how unethical this person is. So you can hate and show extreme hate for some things and you can just say you abhor that thing. It means you really look down on it. You really hate it. Okay, uh, number nine, queasy. So queasy is something you hear a lot and you, you would see people saying that I feel queasy. Queasy means nauseated, okay? Feeling nauseated, feeling like you wanna vomit. Um, when you feel uh, in that situation, you're most likely disgusted of someone's behavior or you have seen a movie or um, clip online which is very gory, it is disgusting, it has blood and you it makes you feel queasy. So you're kind of uh, telling your own situation by saying that I feel queasy but based on something that upset you, based on something that made you very uncomfortable and that is something that makes you queasy. The next word, number 10, well, there are two and um, their phrases, okay? I, I put both together because they are very common. I, I really hope you know this. If you don't know this, if you don't know these phrases, your English needs drastic improvement, okay? And that's fine, we're here to help you with that. But these are, I've had it with, I've had it with, or I'm sick and tired of, okay? Very common. So if you had it with something, it means you're really upset with something, and same thing with sick and tired off. So um, I could say that I've had it with people always being on their cell phones. I'm sick and tired of people always being on their cell phones. So you wanna criticize something, you wanna show how much you dislike something, use these phrases. If you don't know them, please practice, please subscribe to this channel. We'll help you with all the practice we do every Monday with the 15 words or phrases. And please listen to this video for the rest of the video. Five more words to go. The next one is appalled. If you're appalled with something, you're horrified and you're so disgusted and so shocked that something has happened. So if um, there's, um, what happened with Boris Johnson, that was crazy, right? He has been telling people to go on lockdowns and shutting down everything, but he was in a party himself. So someone like him, when he does that, uh, the citizens of the UK and, uh, and England are just appalled. They're disgusted. They are just in shock. And all those feelings of disgust, shock, and anger all combined make you appalled of someone or some institution. Word number 12 is denounce. When you denounce someone, you accuse them of doing something. So I denounce uh, this parliament member of uh, because, because he did this wrongful act uh, in public. So if they did something which I want to accuse them of or make them guilty of or criticize them on, I'm denouncing that person. All right. Next word is disparage. Disparage and the word after that also, uh, we'll get to that. They're very similar. So disparage is degrade. If you disparage your uh, friends, your family, or you disparage mostly, let's say, someone who is a subordinate for you, your employee, your junior, if you disparage them, you degrade them and you insult them and it's not good. It's never good. So if you're disparaging someone, you are insulting them, criticizing them. 
maybe because of something they did, but it's usually not looked up upon. It's not something people would appreciate if you degrade someone or denounce someone. Next word, as I mentioned, belittle is very similar. It is also, if you belittle someone, it means you are degrading that person. Once again, not a very good thing to do, but I made it a separate word because it also has the implication that you are making that person feel unimportant. Okay, so if an employee comes up to you and says, hey, you know, I want to raise, I want a promotion, I think I've earned it, and you say, hey, you, you are not doing as good as other people. So what you just did, you didn't give any constructive criticism, you didn't give anything constructive, you just insulted him or her and made that person feel like they are lesser than others. You made them feel unimportant, so you did, what you did was you belittled that person and very unkind act to do. So don't belittle people. And it's something that people say when they're having ethical discussions. They would say, stop belittling these people. Stop belittling this uh, minority. And that is, again, something where you are making others feel unimportant. Last word is patronize. Once again, a very common, very, very common word. If you patronize someone, it's a verb. It means you insult that person and you insult them in a way to degrade them. So you're literally going after the person to make sure that you find a way to really insult them, okay? So uh, I was patronized by their comments when they said I cannot do 20 push-ups in the gym. So I was insulted in the gym uh, with other, other people who could do 20 push-ups. Or I was patronized when uh, I saw I was driving in the snow and they said I was incapable of driving. So anything where someone insults you and degrades you, it's a very rude thing to do and it's not looked up upon again. It is what we call being patronized or you doing the same thing to other people is you patronizing the other person. Maybe you can patronize people on their looks if you want to criticize them on that or patronize them on how they talk, how what their beliefs are. But again, don't do that, it is a very rude, and that is what patronize basically means. But today's whole lesson was trying to teach you how to be rude. You know, there are situations when you have to speak up, and sometimes being rude is not a problem. Sometimes you have to criticize people who are unethical, and you have a voice, and you wanna voice it. So we get into these situations, and we have to defend ourselves sometimes. Let's use these words when we are defending ourselves, or we're trying to understand these words in movies and uh, TV shows. And if you don't know these words, please subscribe and keep in touch because every Monday we upload these lessons. Like and share as well. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.